everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here today with Defemerember Day 18, and our prompt is Plaid and Polka Dots, Please Touch. So this got me thinking in a couple different ways. First of all, I'm on a mission to use up scraps in my studio. Also, if you've been around for a while, you know that I have a couple of little kids and I have this sentimental attachment to a lot of the, <laughs> their childhood clothing <clears throat> that they have grown out of. Sorry, I'm a little raspy this morning. Um, <clears throat> and so I got thinking back to 2021, I believe it was, when um, textile artist Anne Brooke sort of gave us this fun thing to do <clears throat> during, you know, lockdown and other other challenges that the pandemic brought us. And um, it was called 52 Tags. So each week, I believe, yeah, each week, yes, there are 52 weeks in a year as it turns out. <laughs> Um, she would give us a prompt for stitching, a tag. And I have to say, these were really a nice creative lifeline for me um, during that time. I really felt very good about having this little handheld project that I could play with every week. And I would learn new stitches and I would learn a few new techniques and it would challenge me creatively because sometimes she would give us an actual stitch to learn, like a bullion stitch or, um, you know, just a theme like purple, you know. Um, so the way that I made my tags was I always started with a book page. Well, two book pages, and I would glue them together. Um, and that would be basically the base for how things would get started. So I want to do this today because I think it's a good opportunity to have that same comfort that I had last winter, or not last winter, it's been two winters now, I guess, where I was working away on those tags. So there we go. I just glued them together and then I would use the text kind of as my guide for the size for the tag. They would usually be around the size of the text on a book. So I'm going to go with that. And then the next step for me was layering fabrics on gluing. So I would usually just add some glue to the bottom here to just get the background fabric set down. So today what I'm working with is a plaid from a dress. It was a little jumper that was my daughter's when she was probably about three, I'm going to say. And I'm going to leave some of the seams intact here on the edge because I just I love how the seams look. I think they look really cool. So then I just sort of lay down the fabric here, like so, on one side, so this takes care of the plaid portion of this for me, and on the other side, So then what I would do is essentially <clears throat> just trim off these excess bits at the top that you don't want. Okay. And then don't worry if it's not perfect yet because we have lots of work to go. <laughs> just kind of give it a nice crease. And you can also trim the bottom off too, unless you want something hanging off the bottom. That's also possible. If you want to look on my channel, just um, search for 52 tags and you will see many videos in which I have done 52 tags. Then I'll just create a tag by clipping off these corners. And then in terms of the, the please touch side of things, I think I'm maybe going to get rid of, or maybe I will tack down. No, I'm going to get rid on this side. I'm going to get rid of this extra seam, and I'll show you why. One second. I think I'll put it in my scrap my scrap bin, though, because it'll be fun to use somewhere else. <clears throat> 
or I'll just leave it here and we may end up using it. <clears throat> okay. So now we need to add polka dot and please touch. So first of all, okay, I got to show you this. This was a tiny little dress from when my daughter was a year old and it's got these little bunnies on it and it's the cutest little thing and it has polka dots and I think the bunny it covers the please touch and the polka dots of course they cover the polka dots so what I would like to do is um come down here and just cut a very free form section of this that has two bunnies Try to get as much fabric as I can. Come around, come up here. Let's try to get as much fabric that I can work with as possible while only getting my two bunnies. There we go. So now I have these two bunnies. So cute, right? Then I'll just lay it on here and decide how I want it to be. So I, I know I want the two bunnies on here. <clears throat> Okay, so then maybe what I'm going to do is just trim away a little of this in a pretty free motion way. Okay, a little less at the top. I don't want that to be a hard point. Okay, so that is what I want to do. So then I'm going to come on the back here and I'm going to add a little more glue. The reason I'm just using glue stick is because I'm going to be stitching in a couple different ways. And I like this because like <clears throat> it's kind of not too cutesy, kind of artsy, kind of, um, you know, nature themed, but also bright colors, um, which is good. Okay, so then I'll come in and I'll just trim. Sorry if this is off camera. I just got to hang the fabric. It's a thinner fabric. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to tame this a little bit. So the back is not backed yet. Don't do it yet because you have stitching to do. And also you want it to stay a surface that's not too big. Um, they're thick rather because if you're stitching through it, which I'm going to be doing some hand stitching, um, you don't want to have to deal with like, ugh, like trying to jam it through. So I'm just going to go do a little machine stitching to attach all of this, which was a luxury that I didn't have in 52 tags because it was all about hand stitching. Um, and I'll be right back. So we're all stitched around the edge and I stitched this so that it would stay down as well. I also found this little piece of lace that I think would be really cute with the colors up here. I like the, I like the whole, uh, color scheme. And okay, next I want to grab just one of these little micron pens. And my reason is because I want to draw a few circles here quite randomly. I want some of them to over go over the edge of this a little bit. This is just going to be a guide for stitching. So don't worry too hard um, about if they're perfect or not. Also, if you want to use like a a sewer's like removable ink kind of pen you can um, but I'm not worried about this because it's going to be covered with stitching I'm not too concerned this one here maybe one over this edge here here and maybe one here <clears throat> Okay, I think that's relatively balanced. Um, so then 
I want to use a couple colors. I'm going to go this pink and this yellow. Um, and these are just out of my huge hoard <laughs> of embroidery floss. And I'm actually going to use not an embroidery needle because I need it to be sharp. I'm going to use this big, um, this is more of like a, a tailor's needle. Um, I use them for like everything. I'm kind of, I always use this huge needle for everything. I'm, I'm really obsessed with them. <laughs> so I'm going to take this piece apart here because it's a little thick. I'm going to go with a full six strand floss for stitching today. And um, so we'll just go ahead and thread the needle. Oops. There we go. So I'm just going to poke a hole in the front at the top middle of my first hole. And then I'll go to the back of it and go through the back. And the reason is because that will allow me to just hide my end of my um, thread. And I have a certain way that I like to um, trap my thread. I'll show it to you. So you come down now to the bottom of your hole in the middle and just pull it on through and you get that nice first line of your stitching. Then I like to come through and I stitch or I, I thread my needle through the, the plies of the other um, the other thread and I give it a nice tight pull and then I just kind of do it again in a free form way weaving back and forth through the thread like two or three times and then I do another tug and then you get sort of like a a long woven knot and then I just trim a little bit. I still leave a little tail there. It's not going to hurt anything. And you're going to be covering it up with a backing. So then I can come over here beside my initial stitch again. And I'm just going to stitch on either side of here. I go to the to the left, then to the right of the original stitch back and forth until I have filled in the whole the whole thing. And I want to leave a little bit of space because two reasons. One, I'm using a really big needle. So if I go super close, I'll probably end up punching the paper completely out. And I don't want that. Um, but also I like how it looks to have like this little bit of space that you can still see a bit of the plaid under there. Okay, one more to go for this one. There we go. So that's our first stitched polka dot right there. Then I'm going to come over. I'm not even going to break my thread. I know like the purists among us of a, the stitch people are like, you're going to waste this amount of thread and you're going to leave that tail. Yup, going to do it. <laughs> I know some people are obsessed with the backings of their, their work. And I've done embroidery and cross stitch for many years and, um, I just decided a long time ago that like, I'm not going to obsess over the backing because like, why? <laughs> this is not the 1800s and I am not getting graded on the sampler. So I'm just going to go with the flow and do what feels right. So maybe what I'll do <clears throat> is I will continue stitching all of these until they're done. And then I'll come back to you to show you <clears throat> sort of like how I finish this up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix, like mix this up a bit, like because I have yellow here, I'll do pink there, then yellow here, then pink here, then yellow, then pink, then yellow, you know, so that there's a equal dispersion of these. So that's the plan for me this morning. Let's do a little bit of stitching and then I'll come back and we'll finish this tag up together. Okay, so it is a little bit later and I have finished all my polka dots that are all stitched on here. And I think this is pretty cute. It just feels like very artful and fun. So now we've got, don't tell the Victorians the backside of this. Um, so what I want to do is just go over all of it with glue. Stick again. Let's get right on top of the stitches. Okay, then 
need a backing, which I probably could have planned ahead of time a little here, but that's okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just going to use this, which is just a piece of folder-like paper. We're going to just squidge it on there. Nice and flat. Now I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to do another round of stitches. Um, I'm also, actually I'll cut it out first and then I'll do it. Um, Cause I also want to attach the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the top of the peg. So just kind of cut around. backing on and then we will get this ready to go as well and I think that'll be cute 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 then maybe even a little something else um like a polka dot another polka dot one that I cut out of here maybe like a bigger I'll trim that down a little because it's kind of a little wacky here Maybe can go like that and it will like go with the rest of the piece. Let's just see how that looks. Straighten that out. Straighten this out. Ish. Okay. And that there. Do I like that or don't I like that? Now I feel like maybe it needs something else. Hmm. Maybe it's just going to overcomplicate things and I should just pull it off, but we'll see. Hold on. Give me one more little chance to see if I can make this a little more interesting. I'm cutting these big things, with these or these little things with these big scissors. Yeah, I kind of like that a little more. Okay, so I'll be right back. I will stitch. Alrighty, so it's all stitched around and I had a lot of fun with this. It was just a nice little cozy stitching project. And where the please touch comes in is that I really feel like every time I make a fabric tag like this and definitely my collection of 52 tags, um, I just want to like touch. I just want to feel them. I want to hold them in my hand. So it's nice to have a collection of fabric tags like this that I did as an art project because like I've kept them. They haven't ended up in journals. I mean, I make tags like this a lot for journals too, but it's nice to just have this collection of things, especially if they're made from like something like your children's baby clothes, right? It's nice to have that kind of thing. So that is my project for today. I hope you will give it a try. I hope that if you've also hoarded things like this, um, or, you know, like you don't know what to do with things like children's clothing, um, it gives you a new idea. I, I know for me, um, I, I have probably clothed several kids in um, my friend circle and community because I got a little, um, I got a lot of clothes for my kids from other people, but I also kind of like to live vicariously through their wardrobes. And we do lots of fun vintage thrifting and that kind of thing for cool vintage baby clothes and kids clothes. So I donate a lot and then I end up using the rest, right? So that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.